You're live. We are live, Dr. Mark Vaughn and Dr. or at least the back half of Dr. Gwen Vaughn talking to you about the risks of oral contraceptives as far as specifically was it breast cancer? It was breast cancer. It was breast cancer. Yes. And never mind the person behind the curtain or the squeaky door. Uh, this live YouTube is being put out uh, just because we had this breaking news that came through. Boy, that really is squeaky, isn't it? Coming through uh, the AMA email, is that what you got? Yes. Uh, telling us about, what can you tell us about this study? Well, I just just what I read in the email. Just what you read in the email. Uh, and it's not a study, it's actually a, a um, review. A review. Uh, of a study, oh, it was a study done in Denmark. Study done in Denmark. 1.8 million women. Followed for 11 years. How's that? So, um, that's a that's a lar that's a very high powered study because of the number of subjects. And what was the other part you just said? Um, Over a long period of yeah, time. Yeah, 11 years. Mm -hmm. 11 years. And what was the end point? So, so I guess the uh, it was originally done because the um, person who was recommending or, or started the study was um, trying to see if there was a better um, oral contraceptive that he could re recommend without as many side effects. It actually turns out that there was a slight increase in um, breast cancer uh, in, in the study, uh, which was not the primary endpoint. That was not the primary endpoint. Yeah. So that's not as strong of a study as one where they say, let's see if oral contraceptives cause breast cancer, and then they follow the patients over time and have them compared to a placebo. Right. Okay. So, so um, it Not actually, as strong. It actually comes back as this quite startling uh, number saying, women who take uh, breast cancer, or, or sorry, not breast cancer, <laughs> take oral contraceptives have a 20% increase in their uh, risk for breast cancer, which is pretty startling if you read that. And that's probably what the... Um, the headline will the be tomorrow. will be yeah. when you read it. But it's a 20% relative increase. So, so explain the difference between a relative and an absolute. Well, I, I, I could give you exact numbers increase. if I knew what the baseline risk is for breast cancer. Do we know that so, is? So here, I don't know the actual numbers, but they say the 20% increase translate to about one, one more, more case, case in 7,700 women. One more case in 7,700 women. Boy, that really doesn't sound like 20% to me. No, not really, huh? I'm not that good at math. <laughs> Doing it in my head. But one out of 7,700 does not sound like 20% right. to me. So you, what you have to understand is it's 20% relative to whatever the baseline risk is. Right. And apparently it is... Uh, five out of 7,700 or something. Yeah, I guess like. it would be, and it would go up to six. So if someone went from five to six uh, out of 7,700, that would be a 20% increase. That'd right? be a 20% increase. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So the headline is going to say 20% increase in breast cancer from using oral contraceptives. Yeah. You know that means, oh, that means six instead of seven out of 7,700. Right. So, so I guess the big question is, should you stop your oral contraceptive based on this risk? I would say this is a question that would be taken much more, should be taken much more seriously or given much more thought by people who already have other risk factors sure, absolutely. for breast cancer. So yeah. a person who has a first degree relative, your sister, your mom had breast cancer, you need to be taking this a little more seriously than somebody that doesn't have that risk. Right. I would agree with that. Absolutely. Are there other risks we can come up with? Oh, of taking oral contraceptives? No, no, we know there's other risks, but I mean for uh, somebody else to take this study a little more seriously, uh, who else would be at high risk for breast cancer? I guess somebody who's had breast cancer themselves, yeah, personal obviously. History. That um, would be the highest risk. Yep. Um, those are kind of the big ones. Uh, so, oh, somebody who has one, one of the um, uh, BRCA mutations, but you're probably going to have a first degree relative with okay. uh, breast cancer if you have one of those mutations. BRCA is a... a a type of receptor on breast cancer cells that is sensitive to, what's BRCA sensitive to? Uh, estrogen. Estrogen. Estrogen yeah. sensitive. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, now you're quizzing, taking me back to okay. med school. Okay, okay. We're not, we're not oncologists here, but there are these... Check, check with your gynecologist. You, you can have <laughs> these studies run, and we do them on people who have breast cancer to see if their, their cancer is uh, sensitive, has receptors to estrogen... They also do it for progesterone, and then there's another one. ERPR. And, yeah. and these are types of cancers that we know are, what, more aggressive when you have them, or that if you have that um, mutation, well, it, you're more likely to have breast cancer than somebody who doesn't? Um, 
Yes, with BRCA mutations, you are much more likely to have uh, uh, the whole gamut of female cancers, including um, endometrial cancer, uh, vaginal cancer. It's just all, I, I'm pretty sure those are included in it, too. Why are oh, we sorry, not, not that, o ovarian cancer. Why are we not screening our patients for these, for BRCA? So we actually only, we do screen. Um, if somebody has uh, two first-degree relatives, I believe that is uh, a qualification okay. to screen. So, so that will so be done by an oncologist. Two first-degree relatives. Yeah, one of those relatives who has it, if they say, oh, I have somebody else, they'll typically be screened. And then if they have it, and if they're positive, all of their, you know, um, And can we do this with a will be serum screened. blood test? It is a blood test, yes. Okay, so two first-degree relatives with any of those cancers? Um uh, there are very specific guidelines, which I do not have okay, memorized. So I think if, it, if a, one person has two separate, like they have an ovarian and a breast cancer, then that would be a uh, reason to. Um, and I think two first degree or two people who are first degree relatives, if they both have it, then that's reason to as well. Don't quote me on that. I would have to double check that, but um, so, it, is, it is something like that. So this is kind of an interesting little item in the news and occurrence where you can see that I am right now realizing... I need to get on the NIH website and check and see what their recommendations are yeah. to me for screening my patients for these types of cancers. You just saw me learn something. You just saw the doctor do continued education right before your eyes. Right. Um, so. but, but yes, we don't just learn from each other. We always well, back that up. I was going to say, that's why I'm going to the NIH website. What you got there, Polly? Oh, Polly needs a signature. So Dr. Gwaine's signing something there. Anything else we need before we wrap up? Nothing specific? Okay, there's nothing specific. Anything that you guys need before we wrap up? I saw that there were lots of comments that we weren't, we, we weren't purposely ignoring you. We were, I, I see that Audrey's talking a bunch. How and do you doodle? How do you doodle? Hey, did she and, say and, vasectomy sure. works? Vasectomy does what? work for contraception for, for, quite well. Oh, that, that must be a contraception discussion. <laughs> That's what it turned into. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did, I pronounced I, that wrong. Better. It's, it's um, discussion. D-I-S-C. I, -I, -S -C. I yeah, pronounced so, uh, so the contraceptive. The strange thing is they don't uh, list out any which oral contraceptives um, have this risk. Now, there are essentially two types of oral contraceptive. Most of them are... Um, both estrogen and progesterone. There are there is one type called the mini pill that you will use uh, that a lot of women will use. Not a lot of women, but some women will use while breastfeeding, so because it, it doesn't drive their supply, which is progesterone only. Uh, it's much more sensitive to when you take it. You get breakthrough bleeding. It's definitely not recommended unless you're breastfeeding because it, it can cause because it's um, the better one. But I would imagine that this is probably more related to the estrogen. So somebody brought up with uh, the question, uh, are IUDs okay? So there are two separate types of IUDs. Um, the Paragard, which is a copper IUD, uh, and that has no uh, hormonal medication in it at all. It just causes irritation in the uterus, uterus and an um, unhospitable environment for um, implantation. implantation. So uh, that one, no, I, I, that would not change this at all. Now, the other one, the, uh, the um, Mirena, is a um, hormonal. hormonal one, which has a progesterone component to it. So um, I don't think progesterone was a cause for this increase in um, uh, cancer risk. So the IUD probably would not increase your risk. And, and that IUD slowly releases progesterone over years, and, yes. then, and then you replace it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good discussion. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of our discussion here. And we have a video coming out tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Exciting. About a pain in the neck. Actually, it's more in her head than in her neck, but pain in the neck was a better colloquialism for the, the video. We look, yeah. We're looking forward to seeing you on that video, watching that video. And until next time, we want to give thanks to Boo Boo Kitty, Lindsay Antoine, and Petra Rosenberg. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Um, I guess we should call them the matrons of the Auburn Medical <laughs> Group. Yeah, perfect. Because they, they are our patrons on Patreon. You too can be on Patreon. Just uh, look at patreon.com slash Auburn Medical Group. Dr. Gwaine doesn't have a Patreon for his... I don't. DrGreenKnight.com yet, but uh, I keep trying if to... If I get enough it. supply, maybe I'll, I'll meet that demand. If you haven't signed up for that yet, go to DrGreenKnight.com and sign up for the email newsletter. So he has your email address so he can send it to you. And yeah. then the last little comments here, uh, birth control... Oh, Miranda's saying bye. Miranda, yeah. not Miranda. Miranda. Okay, <laughs> bye, Miranda. And bye to the rest of you. Until next time, Dr. Mark Vaughn and Dr. Gwaine Vaughn telling you to stay in good health.